on the ground in terms of actually collecting money, right? What can the importer do to collect money from the producer in Guangzhou? Is there a way? Because a lot of people listening to us, watching this video, uh, think, they believe, because they've heard it many times, oh, like there's no way. The Chinese party, once they have shipped the goods, they get paid, that's it. You cannot go back to them, right? Is this true? What, what would you suggest? Uh, so my experience is that a lot of the inexperienced the importer who use the import goods from China, they use a very simple contract. They fail to uh, draft an old application properly. That's the reason why they cannot recover the loss from the Chinese manufacturer or exporter. The things that actually say we can do very well, number one, we have an adequately drafted agreement, making that they're liable. And then say, number one, so we have to understand that, say, a foreign judgment by a EU court, for example, in Belgium or in France, is not enforceable in China. A Chinese court will not enforce a foreign judgment unless there is some connection. There are, there are tied to, but obviously it's not really possible at the moment. The one thing, all right, we can, we can break through this kind of barrier is we can have arbitration, international arbitration. We remember that, number one, China is a signatory country of the New York Convention. It means that if the party specify arbitration in a third party country or his home country, there will be a better chance, all right? Because when we have the arbitration award, we can enforce in China because China is actually a signing country that ratified the convention. That is the way that we protect our interests as an importer or retailers in Europe. That's mm. the concept. Okay. We so, can specify mm. number one, you mm. can use your home country law as a government law, or you can use another country, but you have to specify that, say, you use an international arbitration center in somewhere else, maybe Hong Kong, maybe in Singapore, Belgium, Sweden, Paris, London, all right, any place. Because actually, at the time of negotiation contract, the Chinese manufacturer are very willing to open for a third party government law, international arbitration. That is the way that we can protect ourselves in case of any dispute that we suffer loss and how to recover from the Chinese exporter or manufacturer. That's the method. Mm. All right. So if I summarize, number one is to have a proper contract well written. Number two is to have the contract call for arbitration in a country that is part of the New York Convention, right? That is a yes. signatory in, in one of these countries. And then if you have these two things and the contract is well written, then you, uh, let's say the importer, for example, can go back to his supplier, for example, a producer, a producing factory in, in, in Guangzhou, um, how to say, go after them in arbitration as per the contract. And, and um, should the contract actually mention that they are responsible for all the damages uh, and right. like so non-compliance non to EU law? Number one, actually, yeah. say, we make sure that say, the party intend to export the, the goods item mm -hmm. into EU country. Ah, yes. Therefore, right. it means that they have to comply with the local law in EU, am I right? It's a very important that you compare with the, the final sales, the destination of final sales, where the end consumer use is important. They mm, yes. must have to compare with that kind of law. Otherwise, why you sell something that's a infringement of law or unsafe products? It's meaningless. All right. So they say, yeah, we need a couple of well drafted clauses in the contract. We need, say, a government law, which is a Chinese party will be likely to to uh, to accept it and go to a third party arbitration place, which is a China uh, assigning country of the legal convention, all right, for the investment of uh, arbitration hours. I think that will be a fantastic way to mm. protect this if you are an EU importer or seller. Right. Or, or even if you are an American company, develop your product, actually you're selling it in the EU, Canada, uh, sorry, US, Canada, and then you start to sell it also in the EU, then you can also have your contract specify that. And then if you're liable in the EU, then you can yes. go back. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
Yeah, yeah because actually they, a lot yeah. of good buyers like New York, say a lot of US buyers, they specify New York state law, New York City to exclusion, but in the end, it's an empty judgment. You cannot enforce it in China. If, if they call for litigation, right. you mean, yeah. if they call for litigation. Yeah, if you go to litigation, all right? The same thing happened in the EU. If you do say an EU country law like Hungary, and having say a, a, a litigation in Hungary, all right? And then, all right, you got the judgment. You cannot enforce it. That's a problem. Yeah, a big problem. Um, okay. Uh, uh, just to just to just to uh, just to to to, to sort of like wrap that one up. Actually, um, I'm looking at Article Two, Section Section C, Objective Three of the Act, and what what uh, Professor Choi is saying here is actually covered here. It says the rights and addresses to develop and reinforce consumer rights in the particular uh, in the particular through smart regulatory action and to improve access through simple, effective, expedient and low cost redress, including alternative dispute resolution. The ADR yeah. is a method alternative dispute resolution is a new concept, but luckily it's not very well recognized globally yet. Okay. I really think that as a, uh, say arbitration still the best way. Number one is private. Number two, more efficient. Number three, you have say a convention, all right, to make the Chinese parties to be enforceable so that you have very certain. We need certainty as a lawyer. 